Welcome back to The Raven Cast, hosted by myself, Mike Holt, currently recorded and edited by Callum Staley behind the camera. We're delighted today to be joined by Callum Sherry and Team Pinnerton for today's episode. So, lads, thank you for giving me time coming on. No Just recorded your standard quickfire questions, give you a chance to rip a few of the lads, um, <laughs> bother to dive in a bit deeper today. Um, Callum, start with yourself, um, finally having someone represent the north of the island on here today. Um, but you've obviously recently come back from America, back into the FCR man fold. Can you sort of first just elaborate on you know your time over there, um, where you were playing, and you know what you call up to? Yeah, so obviously just did two years in America and uh, over at college I was at a Division Two program in Alabama, which was definitely a lot different to the Isle of Man. But luckily we had a load of English and Irish lads over there. There was about eight of us, I think. So we had like banter and all that was top notch over there. So it was pretty much just like being at home in a completely different world really yeah. when I had a class time the standard of footy there was actually higher than what I thought it was going to be because yeah. all these lads coming over are sort of ex-academy lads who just want to continue playing football as much as they can so they could all come over like we had lads from all over the world France, Morocco a few from Germany and all sorts mm. so you, you're playing with lads from all over the world who have different ideas play for different clubs so definitely brings you on and I've noticed since I've come back definitely improved since going out of there what what was your sort of like routine? Would it be like training every day and then like one or two matches in the week, or you know what was the sort of routine? It was heavy going. Uh, so you'd have you'd have a week of pre-season where it was double triple sessions, and in that thirty-six degree heat in yeah. Alabama, it was triple like, sessions in burning Jeez. like four thousand calories a day. The weight just drops yeah. off you. Yeah, it was shredded after pre-season, <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> 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 we um, after that it's just school you have like two lessons a day and then we used to train 8 till 10 at night and then you play on a Friday and a Sunday so you think you're playing two 90 minute games a week in 36 degree heat like your fitness is just like you won't get back to them levels over here yeah. so you're just fit as anything but it's, it's heavy going like after this because it's such a short season it's only 3-4 months you need a break after it because you're just done in from playing that frequently so do you think like Obviously, you reflect on that experience now. Is that like put you in good stead? Obviously, coming in, getting used to playing and training it, like you know, quite regularly here. Yeah, definitely. I think if I wasn't to go out there and I just come into FC Allen, I would have yeah. maybe struggled a bit. But since I've gone out there, I think it's definitely put me in a better place moving forward. So obviously, before you stood in America, you obviously played for Ramsey Uffi and Dulles Royals, right? And saying. Are you going to tell everyone that you're listening that you, I told you everything that you feel now? Yeah, uh, Polly and Campbell. <laughs> uh, I mean, also, I think playing with you and, you know, you're a very a versatile player um, and obviously you can play in different positions at the back and midfield. Do you think that's... Um, I just, midfield? <laughs> this, is back in the, this is going back a bit now. <laughs> well, would you say that's maybe something... I mean, I think, from, you know, looking at it from the outside point of view, that's probably something that we miss, like a lot of versatility in the squad. Do you think that's going to help you going forwards and getting into the team and being ready? Yeah, I think definitely just mainly along the back four, I think I can play anywhere just and do a job at least. So, yeah, I think it's something that definitely helps me. Definitely. What's it been like, obviously, playing locally? Obviously, besides America, but coming like, into FC, what's the sort of... You know, obviously, it's a big jump, but would you say how big the jump is? Were you surprised by From the, the local game? game? Yeah, from the local game into what we're doing with FC. Yeah, I think it's definitely a big step up, just the pace of the game, how quick it is. Like you just I was thinking the other day how many times in the local game does someone smash free kicking? But I feel like in our league Every week, yeah. yeah, like the week <laughs> lost the West did, someone's just smashed the free kick from twenty five yards. You know, giving one away in the local game, no one's doing that yeah. really. Yeah. But over there any free kick you give away is a danger of going in the net, so yeah. you've got just the little details I think. Yeah. Make a massive punished. Yeah, it makes a massive difference. Dean, everyone has been very excited about you this season. Um, I think from the fans, coaching staff, obviously the players that you're playing with now. Um, I think we can speak, you know, I can speak on behalf of the fans and saying they've been excited and you've been fantastic for the for the squad this season. But just initially, just talk to us a bit about your journey. Obviously, obviously so you're so yeah. young still, but obviously the clubs you've been at, and, uh, yeah. you know, to touch a little bit on that for us. Uh, obviously, it started here in the Isle Man. Was playing for Corinthians and uh, I was like just any other kid. I was just scoring like a lot of goals, but I didn't think anything of it. I just love football. I was playing every day, and then someone told my dad like, "What are you going to do with with Dean with the football?" And my dad wasn't really that interested. So 
I never thought anything was going to come of it. But then I ended up getting trials for Everton. So I'd go back and forth to there when I was about 9, 10. And then I was doing well. I seen the standard there and I thought, well, to be fair, I'm, I'm at the same standard as yeah. these lads. So I was going back and forth and then all of a sudden it just like sort of stopped. It was nothing to do with us or Everton. It just wasn't playing, going anymore. So I came back and I sort of thought in my own head, that's, that's it now, like, I'm not going to go over there. I always thought there's a chance, but I didn't, didn't really think anything of it. Mm. But then there was a lad called Pete Finnegan. He's a, he was my agent at the time. He came over here and watched a game with me at the, I think it was Fitzy's team under 13s or something. And he watched a game and he was an agent. So he took me around all the Midlands clubs. And uh, it was Wolves, Villa, Leicester, Stoke. I think I, I think that could be it. But he took me around them all and I ended up just getting a pick of them. I got to oh, really? pick which, which one I wanted to go to. Cause Big time, like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd done well at all of them. So then I ended up whittling it down between Villa and Wolves. And it just seemed like Wolves was the place. When I was there, like, they just I f- felt wanted. Okay. So I went to Wolves when I was 14, moved away. And went to school there and everything. Signed a four-year deal. Like two schoolboy and then two scholar. Yeah. And yeah, it was generally it was like the best time of life. Literally, how was that? You know, fourteen to to move from here, though. Obviously, from what you've known living over here, and then just going over that. How was that experience with really? it? It was hard at the start. My mum and dad and my brothers and that one though, like I was homesick. Yeah. Like I was proper homesick at the start. But it's just one of them things. You just get on with it. I was like, I'm living my dream here. So I was like, I'm not gonna. I'm never. I'm never thinking about going back in my head. I was like, no, I'm staying here for as long as I possibly can and trying. And it was the best thing. After six months, I was fine. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't want to come home. You end up not wanting to be here, just yeah, yeah, yeah. loving it that much. Because at the start, you didn't really have any mates. And it was like making the mates, and then you do, and then they're your best mates. And it's like, I love it here. That felt like home to me. Mm. When I first came back here, like six, seven months ago, whatever it was, I felt like this wasn't home. Like, oh, I, wanted, yeah. I wanted to go back over there. Yeah. But it sort of feels like that, yeah. And then, obviously, do you still Wolves? What was that like in terms of playing? Like, so obviously, you're there for quite a while. Yeah. What was it like playing from there and then obviously you move on later on? Yeah, it was quality. Honestly, it was unreal. Some of the players you get to see and players you play against, like when we were schoolboys, I was playing against Jude Bellingham. Mm. And now he's well, the best <laughs> best midfielder in the world. So it's like you see all these players and you're playing week in, week out and you're playing against teams like, I was playing against United. And it was like, what? Mm. I was playing against Mills like the other week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing against, it, it, it's just weird. And then, yeah, the step from going from Wolves and then going into a scholar, that's where it got like serious, that's when it starts being like, right, this is like, you're trying to be a football player now, it changed from schoolboy to scholar, it just all changed, it was like, we're in every day, in at nine, then we're training at ten, lunch, back training in the gym, then we had a little bit of college work and then the next day, it was every single day, it was like, eat, sleep, drink, football, mm. and I loved it, but a lot, you see a lot of lads don't, a lot of lads start Falling out of love of the game just because of it. Yeah. But I loved it. And then obviously after Wolves, where did your next part of it sort of um, take you? I went to Wigan and I was at Wigan for a year. And uh, yeah, it was Wigan was probably the best football I played, in my opinion. When I went there I loved it and I was playing really well. I um start of the season I started off really well, made my debut against Oldham. And uh, it was in pre season. I played really well but then I got a little injury. I tore my quad, so I was out for about two months. Then I came back and it was fine, but they went up to the championship and then things happened, so I'm back to leave and came back here. But obviously, like, fantastic experiences. Like, oh, any, it was unreal, yeah. Anyone would love to have that sort of experience. Unreal. I think we did an interview with you quite early on in the season, and I think it's fair to say you came across very well, and people obviously were expecting high things of you because of your experiences. Um, at such a young age, having that experience, have you been able to implement that into the squads, you know, the likes of Callum and stuff, like, has it been quite hard for you, because obviously, you're still at a young age, yeah. where you've obviously had, like, more experience than some of the older lads? I'd, I'd like to think so, you? I'd like to think that I'm putting, like, little tendencies into the squad, like, to people to follow on, and, yeah. like, way of thinking, and never wanting to get beat, I'd like to think that, but I'm probably not as vocal as some other players, like, I'm more, when I'm playing... I sort of, I'm a bit more quiet than the, like Frank, for example. Yeah. Like Frank's quality at leading people, and I never really was like that. Whereas 
hopefully if I get older I can still implement it onto the team and things like that but yeah I wouldn't say fully you had to put him back in his box have you <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Kyle, we've obviously had a solid start to the season today, really, at the time of recording. Um, we've sl- sort of slowly gained our experience in this division, but um, how much have you enjoyed playing for FC Armand so far and um, playing at the bowl in front of a crowd? Like you say, you've obviously been in America, but you know, locally we obviously don't get massive crowds. What's that been like for you personally, playing for the club? Oh, I love it. I think especially the away days with the, obviously the conspiracy going yeah. away, makes they make a lot of noise and it's... You know, they're paying that money to go away and watch you. Like, you've got no excuse not to put on at least a show for them or give 110%. So, no, nah, I really enjoyed it. Love every minute of it, to be fair. And you obviously come from a good footballing family. Obviously, I know your dad used to coach us when we were He's got, like, a really good football mentality. So, is he, is he been quite, like, a big influence on, like, where you're at, you know, and where you have been? Has he been... Yeah, so definitely. Cool? I think, like, he's never been one to sort of blow smoke up me sort of thing uh, which I think is good like there's nothing yeah. worse than having someone just telling you you're good or telling you you're doing well when you're not I think you need someone who gives you that tells you where you need to improve or if you're not sort of pulling your weight so yeah he's definitely given me that sort of good background but obviously at the time of recording we've just beat Glossop at the weekend you obviously started with our mate and you're starting to sort of find your feet in the squad now what is it where, you know, where is it for you now is it just about maintaining you know your position in the squads, getting a season under your belt, getting used to playing with the lads at home, getting used to obviously travelling away must be a different thing for you. Is that so sort of where you're at at the moment? Yeah, because obviously, um, while I was out in America, since January to about May, I didn't play football at all. I wasn't allowed to train with the squad or anything. So, yeah. I'd literally just been going to the gym and that was it. So, having that time away from football and coming back to it, I think, made me appreciate it a lot more. And I think since I've been in the squad, I think I've just been given seven out of tens every week. Wouldn't say I've really put a foot wrong yet. Touch wood, anyway. Um, and that's all I want to do: just try to be as consistent as possible and build upon that. Yeah, Dean, what do you think? Sort of the experience has been like. Obviously, you've had different experiences, yeah. and this is quite a unique one. Yeah, sort of definitely. Playing for your people now, per se. Like, yeah, you know, saying like that. Has there been anything that surprised you? I think all of it surprised me, to be honest. Like when I was an outsider looking in, I didn't see or think it was as big as it was I just thought it was his team in the aisle man I didn't really know what was going on because I never watched a game yeah. I just knew it was happening but it's a lot bigger and better than what I thought and I've genuinely loved it like I actually love it like I get excited to go away and get excited to go train and that's like I had six months away from footy as well so it does make you appreciate it yeah. and doing this is like the best decision I made because I was still at the start I wasn't know if I was going to do it or not really? I didn't know if I was going to come play for FC but Doing it was definitely the best decision I made. I actually love it. Yeah, I mean, I suppose I wasn't really going to ask this, but a question sort of popped into my head now was obviously the clubs you played at. I think when when we've seen you score, you can see your passion, and you know when you've been celebrating and stuff. Does it make a difference when you feel like you're playing for your people and where you've come from, as opposed to other clubs? And that's no disrespect to other clubs you've been at. Yeah, Do you know sort of what I'm getting. I know what you mean. Well, when you're scoring and like my dad's mates are up there, like yeah. when, when I scored that free kick at the ball. My dad's mates were there, and it was like, yeah, yeah. it's just a different feel instead of scoring in front of people you're never going to see again. Yeah, yeah. It was just like, it's it's a bit, it's just better. I can't actually explain it, but it's just, you're playing in front of my brothers. My brothers were watching me play. They haven't, didn't watch me play for six years. Mm. My dad came to the Berry game. He didn't. He never came and watched me. But that's nothing because he was working all the time. That's just what it is. But he actually can see me play now, and it's just, it's just better. Yeah. It's quality. And obviously you love... And the experiences you've had, you'll have played at some like great atmospheres, like great venues and stuff. Yeah. What have you been surprised about the away following? You know, like going to like Barry and the amount of numbers that we yeah. there for such a massive in its infancy. What's your sort of Def- thoughts on that? Massively, I like when you don't expect it. Every time you get on the boat, you like you don't expect to see so many people, but they're just there week in week out, and then like. Some of the fans, like Bruce, he's the one sorting out all the travel there and back. Like, it's it's unreal what they're doing, to be fair. And it helps us so much, as we all know, without them, it's not really, the club wouldn't have anything, really. We need them to come and watch us play. And, like, it, it's massive. And it's the same faces every week. And it's like, we actually got, like, a little club here. Yeah. And proper fans. 
That's what I didn't know. I didn't know it was like that. I thought everyone was just like, oh, yeah, you're playing. But we actually do. It's like fans. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But obviously we know them, so it's a bit better. It's not like fans where you wave off. If I see them, I'd go and speak to them, and they'd speak to me, and we know each other. So it's, it, the interaction's quality. Yeah, and obviously, we've got a question for yourself, Carl, but both of you being young lads, what do you think, you know, the club sort of come at the perfect time for you, hasn't it? Like, you couldn't have yeah, asked this much better. Like, I know some of like, the old lads, like Frank and Albo, and all, they would have been like, they were craving something like this just years and years ago. You must be quite grateful for the club, and you can give back to the club. Is, is, is that been like a big benefit for you to have the club around at a perfect time for you? 100%. It's like, when I came back, what I, I wouldn't even know if this wasn't here what I'd be doing. Yeah. I don't know if I'd be playing footy. Like, and that's horrible to think. Because I don't know if I'd go from playing there to going back to playing Sunday League. I think I'd probably, in my head, I think I'd probably just concentrate on work. Because there's no, there's a chance here of getting spotted again and going further yeah. with FC. That's the best thing about it. Whereas if I came back and I thought, I'm not going to make it in football now. Yeah, I'd play for fun. Maybe play five aside and things like that. Because I love it. Mm. But... I'd probably be concentrating more on work, whereas now I concentrate more on this. Like, I take days off to go away. Yeah. And it's like, because there's that little chance of going back away, and, and this has given me it, which is why, why it's perfect. I don't know if you'd agree as well, but I think it may have maybe altered uh, whether you'd come back or not. Like, I, I yeah. think I would have considered a lot harder whether to come back if they didn't have this on the island. Really? 100%, yeah. Well, it was, it, agree? it was definitely like, when I came back, I was so if and maybe if I'm going to play for them because I was still trying to sort things about going away again and then it just never happened because of things and like just a long story and I rang Dicko and I was down Port and I just told him I'm playing I didn't tell anyone else I'm playing I don't care I just want to play and it was by far the best decision I made and like for the likes of me the likes of Cal young players coming up turning in and by the way I've seen the standard away the lads here are just as good. They're just not exposed to that standard, and it's more the intensity that's different in, mm. I'd say, the academy level than on the Alaman. Anyone can kick a ball. Mm. Get three-year-olds kicking balls. All these lads are good enough, whereas now they actually have a chance to go and show it yeah. and hopefully get picked up. Mm. So that's why it's good. That's the best thing about it. I'd say FC happening gives a lot more young lads in the Alaman more opportunity to actually go and be a football player because it's always been the impossible thing to do. Yeah. And that's in everyone's head, you're from the Isle of Man, it's going to be so hard, but we've got a club now. And it feels like you're being a football It does sometimes, yeah. doesn't it? Like, with that, it? like I said in the last interview, it's like being a football player without being a football player. You some, we're go, travelling away with a team week in, week out, and then playing at home and there's people following you, it's quality. Like, it, you couldn't ask for it any better. It's unreal. Uh, just a final question for yourself as well, Carl. You know, what's your sort of ambitions, you know, for you personally, but for the club, the longevity of the club? What's your sort of ambitions? Have you got that in your like a short ambition in your mind, a long ambition? Yeah, I think for the club, obviously, obviously to get promoted this year. But I think in terms of like the sustainability of the club, it's obviously vital that we get promoted sooner rather than later. So yeah. I think we all need to come together and really make a push for that. Because if we get promoted, there's more chance of this club going on for the years to come. And I think obviously that's something we need to consider. But I think for me personally, just just enjoying playing football and just see how it goes, really. And just save it for yourself, just to end. Yeah, definitely. I think the Prem is the, is the final goal. Uh, <laughs> no. Jones, Jones is, you know, I think he's half joked in the past that he, he's, you know, he, his dream is to have like a proper FA Cup tie of the ball. And well, at me, this point, people might think that's a bit of a joke. But you know, in 10, 15 years time, you never know. You just don't know. You never say never. I mean, Connor spoke about it. Imagine if FC Armagh had an FC Cup draw, and you don't know who you're going to play because it's just random. But I'd say the short-term goal is definitely get up definitely get promoted and I still believe it's possible this season I know well, are we at half are we halfway yet halfway the table, yeah. the court, yeah. and uh, I, I think it's definitely possible we all know in ourselves that we're just as good as every other team and I think the long term is just like you said keep the club going longevity in the club and just getting young lads in and getting them playing away that's the main goal where we are on the table as well it means to chuff all middle of the season it's come the end of it where you stand then so I think Definitely, when we get that home run, hopefully we can put a good run of results together and start pushing up the table. I think we will. Because it is hard going away twice yeah, a week. I think like, that's also something to consider. But, yeah. Well, lads, thank you for giving me time and good luck for the rest of the, rest of the season. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers.